Uh, coming back to you, uh, Chenel uh, Tao, uh, we are looking at, uh, of course, uh, uh, the, the factors uh, that are affecting Africa and, of course, bringing down the country or countries uh, to, to the position of uh, being uh, uh, in debt, uh, distress or debt crisis. So the question is, uh, in your uh, perspective as an uh, uh, maybe economic uh, expert or investment expert, what do you think uh, are the right parameters for African countries to use to be able uh, to have a say in uh, the financial markets that will uh, maybe uh, go a long way to helping countries also solve uh, the debt uh, burden faced by developing nations? Um, thank you for the question. So it's true that um, when it comes to giving loans to African countries, sometimes the terms are not favorable, or even when you compare them to some of the terms that are given to Latin American countries that have similar economic profiles. So that is very true. So there's been a push, you know, against the discrimination that seems to be happening um, at that level. Uh, and it's also linked to the ratings agencies. So you have ratings agencies um, really downgrading um, um, African countries in terms of their debt stock. And then that affects um, the interest rates that they're able to access at the at the international markets or the financial markets. So yes, there is some diplomacy that is involved here. It's one of the things that Kagame as a person is trying to do. Um, I, I hope my internet is still stable and I hope you can hear me. But um, I think beyond that, uh, again, like um, the fellow guest was saying, you know, even when we access these loans, there's the question of what we spend the loans on. But the issue here is that um, we're talking about reform or IMF reform. The issue here is that one of the main issues we've had in African development historically was um, in the post-independence period, because a lot of African countries, you know, with the leaders very excited, finally being in charge of their economies. And then they started to try to invest in, in the economy in terms of trying to drive industrialization. But this was very expensive. So they found themselves in debt, you know, very deep debt. And now when the, the Bretton Woods institution stepped in to try to rescue that process, um, they came with terms. So they said, okay, fine, we're going to take care of these debts for you and make it easier. But they came with terms and that's referred to as the structural adjustment program, because it was at that point that they discouraged the investment in some public services by some African governments because they felt that um, those were too expensive. In fact, some people say that um, that whole you know, a period um, contributed to the fact that up till today, very few of African countries are industrialized. So we need to be careful even when we talk about um, global responsibility or balancing responsibility because African countries are sovereign nations. So there's a limit to, to what um, uh, lenders, you know, there's a limit to what extent lenders are supposed to tell them what to use um, the, the loans for. Um, yeah, because it's, it's historically that's not been the best way to go about things. At the end of the day, it's the Africans that know more, more about the economies and these external actors. But then at the same time, you're very right that these terms have to be more favorable in order for them to be sustainable uh, as one example. But also that it will be good if even as these discussions um, about the loans are being had, that there is more of a collaborative effort towards it. So a more realistic um, estimation of, you know, when it will be possible to start to pay back these loans and what needs to happen, you know, even before that can, that can begin. So I agree with a lot of the points that have been raised, uh, that have been raised previously. And for the, your question directly, I think that it's about diplomacy. It's also about standing our ground because it is a fact that the terms that we are exposed to many times are less favorable even compared to countries with similar profiles. The, uh, uh, so uh, according to you, do you think uh, this uh, credit nations should provide uh, uh, greater transparency in uh, lending pra uh, practices and also uh, ensure responsible borrowing uh, by developing nations? So there is um, something that is said very often, uh, particularly by one of my academic mentors, Kandewiri. Uh, he's late now. It's been a break between the African intelligentsia and then the African government. Can you still hear me? Okay. So there's been a break between the African intelligentsia and the African leaders because ideally 
what we want is not even for these economic try to take on the responsibility for teaching us borrowing because it's not and it's supposed to be the job of the african intelligentsia so african economic experts um that can advise governments on the best way to go about these debts on the best ways to go about spending on the most effective or efficient product uh, project um that these loans ought to be spent on we have as as another example in nigeria we have um a metro line in abuja here a lot of money was spent on that, that measure, but it's in zero to the economy at the moment because it's not even in use, it's viable. So it's the African intelligentsia that ought to be filling these gaps in the knowledge um, in terms of borrowing and spending um, for African governments.